Hey there, I see you. Are you curious about something? Well, I've been making my research about climate change and I think we need to change something. We have to learn about this and this is really important. Because it's our mother earth and it's the only one that we have. So continue watching if you want to learn about climate change because I'm gonna spill the tea about climate change. Hey there, I'm Shara Lu and I am currently a third year college student studying architecture in the University of San Carlos. I do not call myself an environmentalist and I am not here to replace Greta Thunberg. I am not a teacher, nor am I a scientist, but climate change is so real that I can't help but talk to you guys about this. Right now, I'm gravely concerned about the state of our environment. What's happening now is outrageous, with all the pollution, rising sea levels, animal extinction, extreme weather patterns, rising temperatures, melting glaciers, and the list goes on. I believe that most of us are only familiar with the surface of this climate crisis, and I'm here to take you with me as we dive deeper into the world of climate change. Before we talk about climate change and what it is, let's have a quick review first about a few important terms and how the climate system works. Weather and climate are common terms that we've all heard since we were children, but people often interchange their meanings. Both NASA and the National Ocean Service provide us with information about these terms. Weather. It is what we normally see on any day. It also changes from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, and season to season, meaning that it is measured over a short period of time. To further illustrate this, when you watch the weather forecast on the news and the reporter states that your city has a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius and it is sunny with clear skies, that's the weather. There are many types of weather, but the most common are the following. Cloudy, sunny, windy, stormy, and rainy. On the other hand, climate is the average of the weather or the atmospheric behavior over long periods of time and space. When you expect to experience heavy rainfall on September to December and sunny weather or high temperatures from March to June, this is called climate. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, there are approximately five main climate types on Earth. Continental, dry, polar, temperate, and tropical. Continental. These countries experience warm to cool summers and extremely cold winters. This zone experiences strong winds, snowstorms, and even below temperatures reaching around negative 30 degrees Celsius. Dry. These climate zones are extremely dry due to rapid evaporation of moisture from the air and a lack of precipitation. Polar. Countries in the polar zone are freezing cold. Temperatures never go over 10 degrees Celsius even in summer. Temperate. This zone typically experiences warm and humid summers along with mild winters and thunderstorms. Tropical. This zone is known to be hot and humid with typical temperatures reaching more than 18 degrees Celsius annually. Each year, the region receives more than 59 inches of rain. Different countries and different regions of the Earth have varying climates. This is how climate zones typically look like in the globe. The closer you are to the equator, the warmer it is, and the closer you are to the polar regions, the colder it is. Weather research usually focuses on the creation, movement, and prediction of individual aspects of weather, such as a specific low-pressure system or a hurricane. On the flip side, 
Climate research focuses on the totality of low-pressure systems and hurricanes and is devoted to predicting the number of storms or hurricanes that may occur next year or whether they will grow more often or intense as a result of global warming in the coming years. A time range of 30 years is commonly used as a frame of reference when defining climate. To reiterate, the clear difference between climate and weather is the time frame. In short, climate is what you expect and weather is what you get. Now that we understand what climate and weather are, let's move on to the climate system. To fully comprehend the Earth's climate and its variations, as well as to understand and perhaps predict climate changes caused by human activity, all of these numerous aspects and components that impact the climate must be considered. We must comprehend the climate system, which is a complex system made up of many components, including the dynamics and composition of the atmosphere, the ocean, the ice and snow cover, the land masses and its features, the numerous interrelations between them, and the wide range of physical, chemical, and biological processes occurring in and among these elements. In a broader sense, climate refers to the state of the entire climate system, including a statistical description of its changes. In its fifth assessment report, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, which is the intergovernmental body of the United Nations responsible for advancing knowledge on human-induced climate change, defined the climate system as the highly complex system consisting of five major components, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the cryosphere, the lithosphere, and the biosphere, and the interactions between them. The climate system evolves in time under the influence of its own internal dynamics and because of external forces such as volcanic eruptions, solar variations, and anthropogenic forcings such as the changing composition of the atmosphere and land use change. Now, let's go through each sphere individually to further understand them. 1. The Atmosphere it is a gaseous mixture that envelopes the entire planet, and it is also the most unstable and quickly shifting component. This is where you see the beautiful clouds and breathtaking views of the sunset. But the atmosphere is more than what meets the eye. Its existence makes life on Earth possible because it gives every living being something to breathe, warms the planet's surface by around 33 degrees Celsius through the greenhouse effect, protects living beings from the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation, and mainly prevents dramatic temperature changes between day and night. The atmosphere consists of several layers, namely the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and the exosphere. Each layer has its own temperatures, pressures, and phenomena. We live in the troposphere, the lowest layer, where most clouds are found and almost all weather occurs. The atmosphere also contains various gases. Dry air is mainly composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon. The said gases do not interact with the infrared radiation emitted by the Earth, and they have restricted interplay with the incoming solar radiation. Trace gases differ from nitrogen and oxygen due to their ability to absorb and emit infrared radiation. Some of the trace gases found in the atmosphere are carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. These trace gases are known as greenhouse gases, which make up less than 0.1% of dry air. They have a vital role in the energy budget of the planet. Additions to the list of greenhouse gases are water vapor and fluorinated gases. Water vapor is a natural greenhouse gas and the most powerful one found in the atmosphere. Fluorinated gases, or F gases, are man-made gases that are a result of industrial and manufacturing processes. They consist of four categories, 
the hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, sulfur hexafluoride, and nitrogen trifluoride. Although they only make up 2% of man-made global greenhouse gas emissions, they trap a substantial amount of heat. Greenhouse gases raise the temperature near the Earth's surface since they absorb infrared radiation and emit them upward and downward. Even if ozone is a greenhouse gas, the natural layer of high ozone concentration in the stratosphere absorbs solar ultraviolet radiation, which protects all living beings from being fried. The ozone layer is critical to the stratosphere's radiative equilibrium while also blocking out this potentially harmful source of radiation. Aside from gases, the atmosphere contains solid and liquid particles, as well as clouds, all of which interact with incoming and outgoing radiation in a complicated and spatially varied way. Water in its different stages, such as vapor, cloud droplets, and ice crystals, is the most changeable component of the environment. Water vapor is crucial to climate fluctuation and change for these reasons, as well as the fact that the transition between the various phases absorbs and releases a lot of energy. Wow, that was a long discussion about the atmosphere. Let's move on to the second component of the climate system, the hydrosphere. It is made up of all liquid surface and underground water, including rivers, lakes, and aquifers, as well as saline water from the seas and oceans. The composition and circulation of the oceans are influenced by fresh water runoff from the land that flows through rivers and into the oceans. The oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface area. They can store and transmit a lot of energy, as well as dissolve and store a lot of carbon dioxide. The oceans, owing to their huge thermal inertia, act as a regulator of the Earth's climate and a source of climatic variability, particularly over long time frames. 3. The Cryosphere When you think of the cryosphere, you look at Greenland and Antarctica, where ice sheets are abundantly found. The cryosphere consists of all areas on and beneath the Earth's and ocean surface where water is solid, such as sea ice and permafrost, snow cover, glaciers and ice sheets, and frozen ground. The cryosphere's high solar reflectivity, low thermal conductivity, substantial thermal inertia, and vital function in driving deep ocean water circulation are all characteristics that play a role in the climate system. Fluctuations in the volume of the ice sheets, which retain a vast amount of water, are a significant source of sea level variations. 4. Lithosphere It is a solid Earth's upper layer, both continental and oceanic, which includes all crustal rocks as well as the cold, mostly elastic uppermost mantle. At the land surface, vegetation and soils regulate how much energy from the sun is returned to the atmosphere. As the land surface warms, some of the energy is reflected as long wave or infrared radiation, which heats the atmosphere. Some function to evaporate water, either in the soil or on plant leaves, returning water to the atmosphere. Because evaporation of soil moisture necessitates the use of energy, soil moisture has a significant impact on surface temperature. 5. The Biosphere It consists of all ecosystems and living organisms of the Earth's system, as well as derived dead organic materials such as litter, soil organic matter, and oceanic remnants. The impact of climate on the biosphere is recorded in fossils, tree rings, pollen, and other archives. Therefore, biotic markers account for most of what we know about previous climates. Now that we know the functions and importance of each sphere, let's move on to the interactions in the climate system. On a wide range of space and time scales, many physical, chemical, and biological interaction processes occur among the various components of the climate system, making the system highly complex. Despite the fact that the climate system's components differ in various ways, all subsystems are open and interconnected. 
Here is a diagram of how the climbing system works. You can see how interrelated the components are to one another. The atmosphere and oceans, for example, are tightly connected and exchange water vapor and heat through evaporation. This is an element of the hydrological cycle and contributes to condensation, cloud formation, precipitation, and runoff, as well as providing energy to weather systems. Carbon dioxide is exchanged between the atmosphere and the oceans, which maintains a balance by dissolving it in cold polar water that sinks deep into the ocean and outgassing it in relatively warm upwelling water towards the equator. Other examples include the increase or decrease of atmospheric carbon dioxide through photosynthesis and respiration in the biosphere and the obstruction of a gas exchanges between the oceans and atmosphere due to sea ice. The main driver of the climate system is the sun's energy. Heat energy from the sun reaches the atmosphere, where it is either absorbed or reflected, but most of it heats the Earth's surface. The Earth's surface loses heat due to evaporation, radiation, and rising air currents. This heat goes to the atmosphere and back to space, while some is absorbed by the greenhouse gases. The atmosphere releases the absorbed heat, with some going to space while some heating the Earth. All accumulated heat will eventually flow to space, but only when the temperature of the Earth is warm enough to keep living beings alive. These are just a few examples of the interactions within the climate system. Any change that occurs within the components of the climate system and their interactions may result in climate variations. Without the complex interactions in the climate system, weather and climate would not change across the world. No living being would be alive without the greenhouse gases absorbing and releasing heat all the time. Whatever happens in one sphere will affect the processes and condition of the other spheres. Thus, the Earth is a closed system. This then leads us to climate change. What is climate change? Why is everyone talking about it? In simple words, climate change is the change in Earth's climate. This means that the regular weather in a location has changed. It can be observed by the change in temperature in a certain season of a place, the amount of annual rainfall or snowfall and where it occurs, and the overall change of the Earth's average temperature. Earth's climate is perpetually changing, and it is actually a natural phenomenon. Climate change usually takes hundreds or even millions of years to change, but what we are seeing now is evidence that climate change is accelerating at a dangerous rate. Unfortunately, the global warming and climate change that we are experiencing now are mainly caused by us, humans. Human activities such as burning of fossil fuels for electricity and heat, massive deforestation for industry and agriculture, exploitation of marine and ocean resources, and many more have changed the natural atmospheric greenhouse. As early as the 1800s, scientists such as Joseph Fouillet and John Tyndall identified the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is the main cause of climate change. Gases in the atmosphere trap heat from the sun that would otherwise escape into space, resulting in natural warming of the world. Some gases in the Earth's atmosphere act like greenhouse glass, trapping the sun's heat and preventing it from escaping into space, resulting in global warming. Concentrations of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and fluorinated gases have been increasing due to human activities. According to the European Commission, the most significant contributor to global warming is carbon dioxide generated by human activities. Its concentration in the atmosphere had risen to 48% above pre-industrial levels by 2020. Human activity also generates lower amounts of other greenhouse gases. Methane is a stronger greenhouse gas than CO2, although it has a shorter lifespan in the atmosphere. Like CO2, nitrous oxide is a long-lasting greenhouse gas that builds up in the atmosphere over decades to centuries. Between 1890 and 2010, 
Natural processes such as variations in solar radiation or volcanic activity are estimated to have contributed to less than 0.1 degrees Celsius of global warming. Rising greenhouse gas emissions are caused by the following. 1. Deforestation. Lesser trees equate to lesser amounts of carbon dioxide absorbed by trees. Carbon stored in trees are also released into the atmosphere when deforestation occurs. Forests reduce the hazards of abrupt climate change and mitigate the effects of natural disasters. 2. Expanding livestock farming. Livestock production accounts for 14.5% of worldwide greenhouse gas emissions, which are extremely harmful to the environment. This is due to the large amounts of methane that cows and sheep produce when their food is digested. Sadly, agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation. 3. Burning fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas. This produces high amounts of carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide, which lead to the formation of smog and acid rain, and also increases the Earth's temperature in the long run. 4. Fertilizers. Many nitrogen fertilizers produce nitrous oxide emissions. 5. Fluorinated gases or F gases. These are man-made gases that are released from equipment and products that use these gases. They have a very strong warming effect, up to 23,000 times greater than carbon dioxide. Other causes of climate change include exploitation of natural resources, heavy pollution in the air, land, and sea, gases emitted from transportation vehicles, harmful agricultural processes, rapid industrialization, and some consumer practices. Global warming was first theorized by Swedish scientist Svante Arrhenius in 1896, where he predicted that changes in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels would have a significant impact on surface temperature due to the greenhouse effect. In 1938, Guy Callender showed that carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere have been linked to global warming. Today. Global warming is a topic that is discussed everywhere and even in textbooks. This shows how grave the situation is. According to the European Commission, the warmest decade was 2011 to 2020, with global average temperature reaching 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels in 2019. Human-induced global warming is presently increasing at a rate of 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade. 2 degrees Celsius seems tiny, right? But it actually has drastic impacts on all living beings and the natural environment, which will be elaborated later. This graph is evidence that atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased since the Industrial Revolution. In the 1950s, CO2 levels were just a little bit beyond 300 parts per million, and then it rapidly increased to over 400 parts per million today. Here are some alarming climate change evidences and effects. 1. Rising global temperatures According to the climate scientists from NOAA and NASA, the Earth's average surface temperature has risen by 1 degree Celsius since 1880. This graph by Dr. Howard Diamond, which is adapted by NOAA, shows the increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. Two. Vanishing and melting of mountain glaciers, sea ice, and ice caps in the world. This can be seen by the decreasing snow cover in Arctic sea ice extent and thickness, mass loss from ice sheets and glaciers, and the rising permafrost temperature. The rapid shrinkage of the cryosphere leads us to the next evidence. 3. Rising global sea levels and ocean temperatures. This leads to the erosion of beaches, increased flooding or even danger of sinking in coastal areas, contamination of drinking water, endangered wildlife populations, and many more. Did you know that people living in coastal areas experience a sea level rise rate that is three to four times higher than that of the global average? A study by Robert Nichols of the University of East Anglia's Kindle Center for Climate Change Research shows that seas rise by about 7.8 to 9 millimeters annually in coastal communities, which is so much scarier 
than the global average of 3.3 millimeters annually. Today, there are many cities that are at risk of sinking due to rising sea levels. Based on the World Economic Forum's article, some of these cities are Jakarta in Indonesia, Lagos in Nigeria, Houston in Texas, Dhaka in Bangladesh, and Venice in Italy. 4. Extreme and Unpredictable Weather Patterns Have you seen what's on the news lately? Droughts, wildfires, typhoons or hurricanes, extreme heat in various countries, especially in urban heat islands, extreme precipitation and flooding, and so much more. Heavy rains, wildfires, droughts, and the changing of seasons are natural phenomena. But human activity has aggravated these weather patterns and natural disasters. For example, warmer sea surface temperatures may increase the speed of tropical storm winds, resulting in disastrous consequences for countries commonly hit by typhoons or hurricanes. Just recently, Super Typhoon Rai, or that its local name, hit various countries such as China, Palau, and the Philippines. From December 16 to 18, 2021, Super Typhoon Odette landed and wreaked havoc in various regions of the Philippines such as Siargao Island, Dinagat Islands, Southern Leyte, Bohol, Cebu, Negros Oriental, and Palawan, with maximum sustained winds of 195 km per hour and gustiness of 260 km per hour. It was the 15th typhoon and the strongest one to hit the Philippines in 2021. Odette was vicious and ruthless as it brought torrential rains, violent winds, mudslides, floods, and storm surges to these regions, affecting over 16 million people. This disaster resulted in deaths, injuries, damage or completely destroyed homes, loss of electricity, water supply, and telecommunication signals, and more. This is just one horrific example of the extreme disasters that the world has been experiencing in the 21st century. 5. Wildlife Extinction and Loss of Biodiversity Biodiversity loss refers to the worldwide extinction of species, including all plants and animals, as well as the local decline or extinction of species in a specific environment. A species is locally extinct when it is no longer found in a given area. A species is considered extinct when it is no longer found worldwide. Humans have altered ecosystems at a faster rate in the last 50 years. 60% of ecosystems have been degraded and are often overexploited. and pressures on nature are increasing despite the expanding number of responses to biodiversity loss. If this is not scary enough, here are a few facts about our biodiversity that will shock you even more. About a million of species are in danger of extinction. According to the WWF's Living Planet Report 2020, between 1970 and 2016, global population sizes of amphibians, birds, fish mammals, and reptiles decreased by an average of 68%. The Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, or IPBES, reported that over 100 million hectares of tropical forests were lost between 1980 and 2000. A report by Royal Botanic Gardens, Q State of the World's Plants and Fungi, showed that 39.4% of plants are at a risk of extinction. Insects are also at a rapid decline because of industrial agriculture. Now, biodiversity is more important than you think. It is vital to life on Earth because it provides ecosystem services like oxygen, clean air and water, plant pollination, pest control, wastewater treatment, and many others. Without biodiversity, we wouldn't be able to have food security and nutrition, natural medicine, resilience to natural disasters, recreation and tourism activities, jobs, and more. Other effects of climate change include water shortages, 
land degradation, loss of livelihood, increased risk of diseases, malnutrition, and so on. So how do we know that these evidences can be trusted? How are scientists able to study climate change and determine the Earth's past climate? Well, there are many methods that scientists use to study the Earth's past climate. According to NOAA, the study of climate records from hundreds to millions of years ago is known as paleoclimatology. Natural records rather than instruments provide data for paleoclimate studies. These proxy records are indirect records of climatic conditions. For example, paleoclimatologists study tree rings because they can actually show what the weather was like in each year. Tree stumps, when cut, have a certain number of concentric rings that tell its age. Light-colored rings indicate that the tree grew in the early summer or spring, while a dark-colored one shows that the tree grew in the late summer or fall. One year of a tree's life is equal to one light ring plus one dark ring. Trees are highly sensitive organisms that are influenced by local climate conditions. Scientists are able to observe the size or width of the tree rings to determine whether a certain year was cold and dry, warm and wet, or having a drought. They compare current trees to local temperature and precipitation values from the nearby weather station. Other examples of paleoclimate records or sources are rock deposits or sediment accumulation, fossils, corid ice sheets, corals, lake and ocean sediments, and historical records made by early weather observers and ship logs. These records or sources are investigated and studied thoroughly by paleoclimatologists and are used to rewrite the climate background of that region. What now? what now? If the evidence is so clear, and if scientists have been studying climate change for years, why does it feel like we're still in square one? I bet some of you are thinking, why am I learning about this just now? Or why hasn't anyone done anything about this? I know you all have many questions in your head, because I do too. But my job here is to tell you that we should do something about climate change. Well, why should we do something about climate change? I can give you a million reasons to know. You're giving me a million reasons to let you go. Oops, wrong channel. Okay, let's get serious. 1. The Earth is our only planet. It is our only home. Without it and all the natural resources that Mother Earth offers, we would be nothing. Let's face it. The Earth does not need humans, but humans need the Earth. 2. Our natural resources are rapidly depleting due to our excessive and unnecessary use of resources. Yes, we need food, water, and shelter, but I think that overproduction and overconsumption leads to overexploitation of resources. Without clean and rich bodies of water, lush forests, Clean air to breathe, fertile lands, natural gas, oil, coal, minerals and stones, and a rich biodiversity. Our planet will be inhabitable, and the future generations will have nothing left to use and enjoy. There wouldn't be any point in living anymore without our precious natural resources. We would be living with water scarcity, food insecurity, extreme droughts and precipitation, and more if we don't try to reverse global warming. 3. It's not just about the human race. The lives of plants and animals are in danger because of climate change. Wildlife extinction and loss of biodiversity is a growing problem that is caused by many reasons, such as illegal coral harvesting, illegal animal hunting and trading, massive deforestation for agricultural land, extreme weather patterns causing droughts or extreme rainfall, and so on. These things harm plants and animals and their habitats. Animals will not be able to survive because of the lack of water, loss of habitats, and the disruption of the food chain. Plants will not be able to grow with infertile and damaged soils, 
and both animals and humans will not have food to eat anymore. 4. Our rainforests and oceans are precious habitats on the planet. Rainforests are known as the world's lungs and oceans are known as the carbon sink since they absorb around 25% of all carbon dioxide emissions. Rainforests do not only absorb carbon dioxide emissions and naturally filter the air we breathe, but they are home to a large number of the world's plant and animal species. Both our oceans and rainforests play a huge role in our fight against climate change. If we destroy them even further, we will be digging our own graves. 5. Climate change doesn't just affect a few things, but it affects all of us. We are so blessed to be able to live in a captivating, diverse, and flourishing planet. The future generations deserve to feel safe and secure in their home planet. Thus, we should take action in making our lives as sustainable as possible to accommodate the needs of our children. If we do not take action now, our planet would be on fire. The crisis that the humans are experiencing today is the epitome of the quote, what goes around comes around. Unfortunately, we are only realizing the consequences of our actions today. Climate change and global warming needs to be addressed urgently. It is currently affecting the lives of many innocent and vulnerable people, animals, and vegetation, especially in those areas that have the least ecological footprint or negative environmental impact. These problems will not resolve on its own, just like how they did not sprout naturally. Human activities are the very cause of the Earth's damaged condition, and it is our responsibility to fix the mess we have made. Thus, the human race should start taking action today before it is too late because the earth cannot take any more damage. Although it is difficult and daunting to solve the climate change problem that we are experiencing today, there is still hope as long as all humans take action immediately. Now that we've had a mini crash course about climate change, it doesn't stop there. We have to take action immediately before it's too late. But hey, don't be too scared or overwhelmed to start. I'm going to share a list of concrete solutions that anyone can do to lessen the effects of climate change. If I can do it, you can too. Now, these are some simple ways to combat climate change. Use mass transportation or non-fuel vehicles such as bikes. You can even walk to places with short distances. If you can't avoid using gasoline vehicles, try carpooling to save on costs and reduce your carbon footprint. Propagate plants at home. This not only makes your home beautiful, but it can improve its indoor air quality. Recycle single-use plastics or products. Reduce waste by buying fewer material goods and by simply living with what you currently have and need. Buy local products and produce to reduce carbon emissions from transportation. Take shorter showers to save water resources for the future. Use fans instead of air conditioners. Avoid using the air conditioners when the weather is cold or windy. This saves electricity, reduces carbon emissions, and allows you to experience and feel the refreshing natural breeze. The best part? It's free! Use your usable tumblers when going out or when buying drinks in a cafe. This significantly reduces the plastic waste we produce, and we also do not have to spend money for bottled water. Use reusable bags when marketing or doing grocery shopping. You can even opt to carry your items in a paper bag if you don't have a reusable bag yet. Use reusable straws instead of disposable ones. If you forget to bring yours or if you don't have one yet, you can opt to consume your drink without a straw or plastic lid on top. If the store has paper straws, go ahead and use them. Use reusable feminine hygiene products such as menstrual cups and cloth pads. 
Menstrual napkins and tampons are widely used by women today. And these plastic products take 100 years or more to degrade. Reusable napkins and cups are more environmentally friendly, and they save more money in the long run. Make Eco Bricks Eco Bricks are bricks made out of plastic-filled water bottles that are used for building construction. These are a great alternative to concrete hollow blocks, and they actually put single-use plastics for better use. Cook your own food instead of buying takeout or delivery food to lessen single-use plastic containers and carbon emissions. What can you do to bring long-term changes? I'll share a few just to get you started. Strive for a circular economy. According to the European Parliament, the circular economy is a model of production and consumption, which involves sharing, leasing, reusing, repairing, refurbishing, and recycling existing materials and products as long as possible. In this way, the life cycle of products is extended. This is a departure from the traditional linear economic model, which is based on a take-make-consume throwaway pattern. Examples of circular economy at home are composting, recycling, buying secondhand items, repairing items, going package-free, and even styling clothes differently instead of buying new pieces. Vote for the right leaders. Choose leaders who do not only care about the welfare of the people, but the environment as well. Make thorough research about political candidates before casting your vote because you have the power to change the course of history with one ballot. Join tree planting projects initiated by local organizations near you or start your own. Join beach or river cleanup projects in your local community. Lastly, join environmental organizations in your local communities or schools since they can provide more opportunities and projects for sustainable development. Feeling a bit overwhelmed, huh? Good news! You don't have to do all of these things perfectly. And if you're thinking of having a zero-waste lifestyle, take note that it can actually be very unsustainable and sometimes even counterproductive to the majority of the world population due to the different needs and conditions of countries. People living in first world countries, such as Finland and New Zealand, may have an easier time adapting the zero-waste lifestyle due to their advanced technologies, facilities, and improved laws. On the other hand, people living in developing countries may not be able to stick to this kind of lifestyle because of the lack of resources, product packaging, less advanced technologies, and poverty. But if you can manage a zero-waste lifestyle, that's awesome and I absolutely salute you. But for most of us who cannot adapt the zero-waste lifestyle, it's okay. We do not have to make great changes in a short span of time but good little changes each day. This is because we need to ensure that the lifestyle changes we make are also sustainable in the long run. I personally think that it is better for a huge population to do simple and effective practices imperfectly rather than to have a handful of people practicing a lifestyle perfectly. As individuals, doing small transformative actions collectively can create a better, larger, and more positive impact on our environment. Again, the need for climate change action is urgent and difficult to do, but nothing is impossible as long as we put our minds into it and take action immediately. Bill McKibben, an American environmentalist, once said, climate change is the single biggest thing that humans have ever done on this planet. The one thing that needs to be bigger is our movement to stop it.